Oh, up. Always good. You get the two-year-olds, the three-year-olds, and yesterday was one of the very good days at Flemington. Keith Hillier, what did you make of Mahogany's win in the Australian Guineas? Oh, I thought it was full of courage, Bruce. It was his uh, fifth start at Group 1 level and his fifth win. Yesterday, uh, well, they all took him on. They made it so tough for him and he came good at the finish, winning narrowly but courageously. I loved his win yesterday. And Mahogany, Max and Sydney, what did you think of Mahogany's win at Flemington? Oh, isn't he good, Keith? I <laughs> loved his courage. I thought uh, it was just a win. I'm surprised at Greg Hall complaining that other jockeys took him on. That's what happens when you're riding a hot favourite, when you're riding a, a, an outstanding racehorse. They're entitled to take you on. A mahogany scrambled to beat uh, Pride of Rancho. I don't think it was his best win, but he won. That's the important thing about it, and I'm certainly going to stick with Mahogany, but I don't think this will be remembered as one of his best performances. Well, he was second... Uh in the box seat, but this is where the action happened. Bounty Hawk's about to zip around them, and the key to the race is about to come up. Coltar leading, Mahogany sitting second. Bounty Hawk forces a Hall to rev up here. Mr Mutual Respect was a mighty run. He's back with the blinkers in about third or fourth last placing. Voting had very little luck with the shadow roll. But the key here, Keith, is that Mahogany has to boot up in between, and you'll see him dip in a moment and almost lose his footing. We'll tell you the story of that in a moment. That's, That's Mahogany in front, the blue and the white cap. He almost loses his footing. It looked as though he changed strides. He probably did. There's Pride of Rancho coming at him and just keeping coming. A surprise uh, run from the size produce stakes winner. And the finish was so tight that for the first time in his career, Brent Thompson asked for a look at the photo finish print before correct weight. Well, it did get tight. Mahogany just hung on Pride of Rancho. And uh, Simon Marshall said if Mr Mutual Respect had drawn better and been a little closer, he would have beaten all of them. Rematch of the trio in the Australian Cup, and that's something to look forward to. Yeah, I liked uh, Max. I must agree with Keith here. I thought Mahogany's win was uh, full of credit, and Lee Friedman was wrapped in it afterwards when he spoke to Keith. Lee, if we needed proof, but we got it today. Mahogany is the best three-year-old in the land. Yeah, the margin wasn't there, Keith, but the, the, the will to win and the, and the greatness shone over the last 200. I thought the amount of work he had to do to get over and sat right on the pace and it was a very fast run guineas and uh, uh, a lot of guys from intent will put a lot of pressure on him coming to the corner. Greg probably had to make his move a lot earlier than he wanted to but he's a, he's a great horse and he responded and he's won. I think that's the key and when you're left in front of Flemington it could be pretty tough and Keith also caught up with the jockey Greg Hall and asked him about that incident at the 400 metre mark. Greg, uh, Mahogany changed stride, uh, it was something on the track. Yeah, he, everyone seems to think that he changed stride, Keith, but there was a white paper bag out there, and I actually seen it sort of 50 metres out, and he get, carries his head so low that he never seen it till late, and he, uh, he jumped it, so there's hope for him in later life too, I think. <laughs> as a hurdler, but he's uh, tongue-in-cheek as he often is, as Greggy Hall. OK, Mahogany, I think, you know, obviously going very well, five for five in Group 1. Durbridge is flying, but uh, they're pretty weak at the moment. Well, they were, and he's the fit weight for age performer on the scene, but uh, gosh, Bruce, he, he totally uh, uh, demoralised this field. He's a six-year-old stallion, and yesterday it was one of his easiest wins, if not the easiest. Sitting outside Saracen, Max, this was about as strong as those weight for age races you have up in Sydney early spring, wasn't it? Yes, if Durbridge was mine, he'd be on his way to Sydney now, because I, I think he can win... Uh, some of the uh, upcoming wait for age races at Rose Hill. But Durbridge came home much faster than Mahogany on the section, I noticed. Ran the same time. Uh, this, is, this is a very good win. Uh, and again, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not bagging mahogany. I'm certainly not a mahogany bagger. But I, you're making too many excuses for what, in my opinion, was an average run. And I think that Durbridge uh, highlighted that fact. That Durbridge went very, very well yesterday. What are the Better plans? than mahogany. Well, fair enough. What are the plans for uh, Durbridge? Well, Max will probably probably get what he wants. Uh, Durbridge, I'm sure, will go to Sydney. But he too will contest the Australian Cup before he leaves, Bruce. How do you line him up with mahogany in the Australian Cup? Oh, look, he's got to be there. Uh, but, um, I don't know, I, I lean to Mahogany, but Golden Sword's still on the scene too, you know. Yeah, and he did look a bit fat the other day, and he's the one. Um, Alderson was the big uh, query in the, the straight race. Everyone was looking for him. He's got the white bandages. He's about seventh or eighth at the moment. Laser Beam looks all over a winner. Salquita comes with a terrific late dash. But Alderson, a horse who, uh, well, might have won a Doncaster and an Epsom by now had he not uh, bowed his tendon, but he looks to have come back very well, Keith, and there's a lot to like about his finishing effort. Before yesterday, six wins and four seconds from ten starts, he blotted that record slightly by finishing third. He protested. That distance is too short uh, for him now. Wait for him in the, in the Futurity Stakes. He'll win that for sure.
You like him, Max, Sir Alderson? A courageous run yesterday, yep, certainly I like him, it's just a matter of how, how long the legs stand up for. Just wonder where the best two-year-olds are in Australia at the moment. Are they in Sydney or are they in Melbourne? We saw one yesterday, Hurricane Sky, who's amongst the favourites for the Blue Diamond. Well, a week ago you thought that Mr Vitality might be the best. There were excuses yeah. made for him yesterday, Bruce, but... Uh, oh, look, I didn't subscribe to that theory. I thought that he may have peaked and uh, I wonder whether the $20,000 or $25,000 late entry for the Blue Diamond has now become a gamble instead of an investment. Well, he didn't have a lot of luck. Watch for Hurricane Sky leading on the fence. Uh, does he hit the running rail here, Keith? What happens to him? He looks as though he hits the running rail, but he doesn't. He actually slipped right at the 400 metres. I think that cost him a length to a length and a half, and it probably reduced his... See? Again, probably, re or certainly, reduced his winning margin. He, he scraped home in a photo finish, but I think that... Uh, this race should have been won by Hurricane Sky by at least a length, maybe two. A lot of his momentum was taken there, Max, and I agree with Keith. I mean, a week ago I said Mr Vitality was uh, number one, but I don't think he'll beat Hurricane Sky again this uh, spring. Punters didn't or agree order. with either of them. Sorry, Max, uh, they gave Mick quite a rousing... Uh, well, the natives were restless, Max. Yes, well, they, they get that way when they do their money, and I know the feeling. Uh, I, I do agree, Hurricane Sky is the improver, but there doesn't seem to be a really dominant two-year-old in Melbourne. Not that there's one in Sydney, but there's quite a few with, with plenty of scope for improvement. Is there that much scope down there with your youngsters? No, look, um, I've got to agree, Max, as much as it uh, irks me. Uh, I don't think we have an outstanding two-year-old in Melbourne at present. And what about Dr Zachary yesterday in Sydney? Was, was he uh, impressive enough to be a big chance in the slipper? On the face value of yesterday's run, perhaps, but has scope for improvement. Another horse in that race, Simulcast, was, was very, very impressive. Has a ton of scope for improvement. That's the point. That's the key to them, if they train on. Now, this is the Hobartville. We're clearly chosen and Simpo's got a big lead. Arborea was the run, Have a look it? at her. She's right back on, about three off the fence in a white cap. This, this was... It makes, still makes me cry looking at it again. <laughs> oh, you must really? have had yours on, Maxie. Please, Maxie. please. <laughs> You'll see a flash into the screen. Have a look at this. Oh. You're saying she ran, into, ran into a massive traffic jam on the turn. Like, really, it, the horse was entitled to run a good eighth. What does Shane say about it, Max? I oh, should have won by a minute. That was quite apparent to everybody who watched it. Roosland? Roosland, trap wide, slightly disappointing, but don't wipe him yet. They're ordinary, though, those horses, don't you think, other than Arborea and maybe I'd one like or two I'd like to own about four of them, Bruce. They can be placed to advantage. I don't know whether they're outstanding, but certainly uh, uh, Arborea is very good. And don't forget uh, the magic words, constant flight. Yeah, and shelved, what about it? Good run will improve. Another horse that'll win races. I don't know whether he's in the real top grade, but certainly he's got plenty of ability. Gee, Mahogany would have picked all those up, Keith, and carried them yesterday. He's the best three on the land. There's no doubt he's, uh, they keep serving up rivals to him and he keeps uh, uh, beating them, Bruce. What about Burst uh, yesterday, uh, Maxie? It's been a long time for her, September 92, wasn't it? Yes, uh, and it just shows the difference a horseman makes. Have a look at Larry Olsen on this filly. Got a perfectly placed, uh, got his whip tangled up at the start, one without his whip, didn't need it, but this is what balance is all about. She's about four off now with a white cap. That's getting in between, right. Getting it, giving Soho Square the heave-ho there. That's right, but look behind them. Kingston Bay in the white colours, just going along at a hand canter. The tears are going to trickle down my cheek in a second. This goes on. Now, Kingston Bay is out now. A tear you Surge is clear. What was clear Clear for about three strides. You'll have us in twos if you keep serving up Kingston Bay as a horse to follow, Max. He's got a few convictions. <laughs> if he had the runs like he had yesterday, it's no wonder. What about that good horse, Telesto, Max? Well, Shane Dye has told Connections that Telesto is the best miler in Australia, and the way he rides him, he'll have to be, with a dash of Burnborough too. <laughs> Gee, Maxie, you're giving them a serve. You will be crying, I reckon. He's in good form today. <laughs> Max, thanks for the uh, St Valentine's Day card. I presume it was from you. It said, roses are red, violets are blue. I love mahogany, but not as much as you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> you fancy yourself yeah. as a banjo, Patterson, Max, don't you? Yes, but that wasn't vintage banjo. <laughs> that was more gay Mardi Gras. <laughs> Listen, well, you know all about that. <laughs> Look, very quickly, who's going to win, Scalacci or Ken Vane or who in the Lightning? Ken Vane has a fantastic record, record. He'll prevent Scalacci making it three on it. It's Irish Day. Christy Roach there today, OK, Bruce. I'll give you a special today, Max. Never undercharge. Good right on over you, the son. top Right to on it. I'm right in there with you. Maxie, see you next week. <laughs> see you too, Keith. Sure will. I'll tell you what's coming up after this. Uh, an update.